and you are focused on uh, Picasso as a foreigner, right? So I would like to know why you have chosen to do an exhibition and a book with a huge work about this subject. Because I've been completely obsessed by the crossroads between alienation, being a foreigner, being a stranger, and the, and the, the, the field of the art world. I have noticed that most of artists have had to travel and that since uh, Vasari, and uh, and I have it, it's basically it must be part of my own history, something that I don't talk much, but that drives my research. And for the last thirty years, since I met Leo Castelli, I have been trying to understand what makes an artist from abroad. Um, someone who can decipher a society better than anybody else. And why is it that artists become the victors of um, s s um, social transformations? And I do believe that artists or people who migrate are extraordinary ca carriers of um, social modifications. I mean, let's take the example of Lee Castelli. You know, he brought to the United States the culture of uh, Renaissance Italy. Because he... you did a book about Castelli, but let's focus on Picasso. Sure. This is sure. the subject of today, right? Definitely. So Picasso is um, in, it, in himself as um, a Spanish boy arriving in Paris at age 18 with four Spanish cultures on his back is an example of how um, there can be a confrontation of models between his um, plural cultures, uh, Castilian, Catalan, Galician, and, um, and Andalusian, with the French model, which is extremely centered, mm -hmm. extremely ethnocentered, and totally um, um, rigid, especially in 1900 when he arrives, because at the Universal Exhibition of 1900, 50, 50 million visitors come. This is the biggest art exhibition in the world. And the French president, Émile Loubet, is sending fabulous speeches about France as a model, uh, showing its genius all over the world. Mm. But Picasso, for Picasso, the genius is in the Prado. It is Velázquez, it is Surbara, it is Goya. It but is he, go to, he goes to the Louvre, right? He goes to Paris because Paris is the only place where to be when you want to become an artist. It's be in this tension between the rigidity of the École des Beaux-Arts and the avant-garde movement that the effervescence, the, 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 the tensions uh, emerge. And that's what drives all the artists to Paris in the first place. Many Americans come over, many Russian boys. And one of the, one of the important things that you show in your, in your exhibition is uh, the role of the mother. Yes. She loves him. Certainly. She's completely... Uh, Mesmerized she's, by him. Yes. yes. And do you think since the beginning she thinks he's a genius? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think that behind Behind a genius, there's always a, a Jewish mother. Yeah, uh, but she's not mother. Jewish. This she one. might have been Jewish because she was from Genovan origin. She was uh, Picasso is from Gen, Genova. So uh, this is something that even the family they sometimes say. Diana Picasso says so. Ah. So it might be. But anyway, she is from Andalusia, uh, and she behaves like um, the women from the culture of Al Andalus, which is the medieval culture with the three religions together. And this is a, the culture where I was born in North Africa, therefore I know it. But this is one of the scoops of my show. It's because I discovered in my research the extraordinary um, troves of the Picasso Museum. And among them, you know, like more than 200,000 pieces, Picasso never threw away anything. Mm. Among them, I always ask, you know, but what is the correspondence with the family, especially for people who, who travel? And that gives you a, a very good 
image of how they relate to their past. And in fact, Picasso's mother wrote to him from two to four letters a week for 40 years. And each time she ended by saying, um, get, I mean, receive wonderful affection from your mother who loves you so dearly and never will forget you. Every time she writes that, she ends with that. And shortly, uh, speaking about what is his perception of France at, his, at the end of his life? But Picasso lives in France. Picasso creates his work in France and has families in France. Uh, what he does is that he finds the right voids in French society in order to, to install his kingdom. But he does so not in Paris, but rather in the South. So as soon as 1955, he um, moves to the South, never to return to Paris. He chooses a craftsman in Valoris and he works, he reinvents himself with um, ceramics, with photographers, with printers, with sculptures, younger people. But why are you away from Paris? Uh, because I think Paris is a bad experience for him, because Paris represents the, the, the stiffness of French uh, traditions. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there is a symbol in the show, uh, in my exhibition. At the beginning, Picasso arrives at the Universal Exhibition and he has one piece in the Grand Palais who has just been built uh, in the Spanish pavilion. He gets in by the back door with the Catalans, with look, with a look which is extremely suspicious. In the end, we have another film of the Grand Palais being given to Picasso with a red carpet. Yeah, uh, Malraux organizing his homage to Picasso, 1966, with 800 works. Grand Palais, Petit Palais, Bibliothèque Nationale de France. But Picasso doesn't come. Uh, so, evidently, that building is a symbol of, first of all, the, the uh, French, um, French power or uh, pa the, the power of Paris over the young artist arriving there as a, an alien, a paria. Mm -hmm. But also um, the reverse of the situation, um, you know, the, the whole uh, power gamma has totally shifted because of Picasso's astute genius uh, as a fabulous strategist. And um, he has made Paris his kingdom and France's kingdom and the world. Mm -hmm. So this is this is absolutely brilliant. That's what I discovered. Merci.